morning, everybody. Um, you know, to come into and, and gather in the presence of the Lord it sh should not be about liturgy. It should be in, in following the program, and the program is important because we pray about the program. You pray what to put on the program, and so it's important. But the program itself should never supersede God's presence, what he wants to do, how he wants to minister in a given moment, because that's what, one of the reasons why we gather together, that we can meet together with God, that we can receive and through the program and every other way what he wants. I praise and I, I just thank the Lord uh, for his presence and how he has interjected in, in, through the program, but also sovereignly by his spirit this morning. And uh, ministering, and even through that song, because there are people who, are, who trust God, who are learning to trust God on deeper levels. Because it's not that the trust that they've had in God was not sufficient in the time, but they're learning to trust him in, in, in greater areas of uncertainty, in new areas of having to step out in faith, and all of those. If you see people getting emotional, uh, you have to, it's just, not, it's just about having, getting, uh, getting fired up in a service. But it's about getting, it's, it's an emotion that is connected to a journey. And so I praise them. Also, we, uh, earlier in the week, um, just felt that we needed to shift this part of the service. We had the blessing of, uh, we were out to, uh, to breakfast. Sharon and I were out to breakfast with uh, Sister Tenney. And, as, and, and we've had the joy, every time God, she has a furlough coming home from the mission field, uh, we have that time together just to find out what God has been doing. And a few times we felt like we, you need to share and just share what God is working in and through your life uh, out on the mission field with everyone who's here. Um, and, and you already know, as I've said, this, this is Sister Tenny Shea. And Tenny has been on the mission field for 25 years. Amen. Amen. Um, and I felt I, I want to put, put up our, we're in a sermon series, and this, this, time, this conversation is very much connected to our sermon series. And so I want us to put up uh, the title of our series is Ignited. And want to read the vision for it again in, in our hearing and seeing this morning. So it is the vision for this series we've been, and, and, the, and as we've asked God to give us sermons, and, and like I said, this time we have today is centered around us becoming individually and collectively people who are ignited by extreme passion for God that produces and all in commitment to knowing him, loving him, and living for him. And the reason why I'm excited about this, this uh, conversation today is because the person I'm going to be talking with exemplifies what that vision is about. Uh, and, and, and all in commitment to knowing, loving, and living for and serving our Lord. So... Tanya, I already mentioned that you uh, have been on the mission field for 25 years. I want to ask you, when did you know that Father was calling you to the mission field? Actually, actually it's been 20, okay. Actually, it's been 28 years. Are we on? We're not on. We are on. Okay. 28 years going to pastor, but 24 years, 25 will be in the Philippines, just that one country. Yeah. When did I know that God was calling me? In my, in my senior year of college, there was a cha challenge given to us to take uh, a missions course, a world missions course. And uh, we took that course knowing that the possibility that those credits might not, cost, might not count towards our graduation. And those credits I needed to graduate. But I knew God wanted me to take that. And out of that time period, we were called the Calebites, those who stand in the gap. 
And out of that time period, I think three mission organizations were born for my group. Uh, other ones went into fields where there was, they were not allowed. They had to go in as, um, what do you call it? Sorry. They, were going, they went in like as tent makers. The, the profession they used to get in those countries that were closed, like North Africa and other places. So in college, I knew that uh, God was calling me in a different direction because when I took that stand, I knew that that might cost my graduation. But God worked a miracle, and things turned around, and they counted those credits, those credits for graduation. So I knew that, God was, that was, God was doing something different in my life then. And then after that, I, uh, I was in college. I was involved with Campus Crusade. After that, I went on a, on a, on a, to seminary for a little while. And then I, I came back, and I was so excited. I told my mother, you know, that God might be calling me to the mission field. And my mother is of the old school, in a way. <laughs> Definitely African American. My mother looked at me, she said, you graduated from college, you know, and uh, I did not raise you to be a beggar. Well. When my mother said that to me, I, I shut my mouth and I just cried and I walked away and I said, God, I don't go until she agrees, you know. So in between that time, I, I began to go to this church and I began to minister in this church. And I worked with special needs, so God used that in my life to begin to develop me for the mission field. I didn't even know where it was going. And then, um, and then I remember I would come here Gill Street, and I would go in front of the altar, and I would cry. And I would say, God, what are you doing? What is your plan for my life? I did not know that God was going to use this church in a way to prepare me for the field, prepare me to begin to be able to pray in such a way that I never prayed before. God took me to the place to pray for the youth in this church. Ephraim was, was one of those youth. Uh, Janet, Janet, Jeanette was one of those youth. Um, God uh, broke my heart to begin to ask, I began to ask God, when will they know about the Holy Spirit? So um, one of the ones here, I forgot his name, I asked him to come and pray for the youth. Uh, he came and laid hands and began to pray for the youth. And God began to move in a mighty way. He prayed for the leaders, and at that time, I had gotten so cocky within myself, you know, that I, I stood off and I said, God, I said, well, first I said, God, he's not, has not prayed for the leaders. And he looked up and he said, I will pray for the leaders, okay? <laughs> then I stood off and I said, God, uh, if you want him to pray for me, you must bring him across the room to me. That's how cocky I got. <laughs> so then God brought him across the room and he began to pray, he began to pray things that I had only talked to God about. Nobody knew these things. And nobody knew that at night I would go to bed and I would, everything would come out automatically. Just a ghost would come out of me. And he began to pray and he said, God is healing you of this. And then he said, and he said God is going to move you out of the way because you are blocking him with your family. You got to get out of the way. And then he said, God is going to take you to the mission field. And I said, what? He said, yes, and you, got to, you have to be ready fast because it's going to happen quickly. And I was like, okay. And that, that broke something in me. Then I, I realized that I had stepped away from my calling. So then the next day I got a phone call from an, agent, from an African-American agency that I had been going to Mexico with. I'd been going on my own, my own side to missions on my own. And he called me and he said, I sent you an application. I said, what application? I sent you an application. Did you fill in it? I said, no. I don't know anything about application. You know, that's what I said. And so he said, he said, well, I'll send you another one. So he sent me another application. I filled it in. Then he said, you need to go down to Mississippi in front of the board. Uh, and I know in my mind, I said, I don't have no money for the ticket. How am I going to get a plane ticket to Mississippi from here? And then, um, then I said, I had to talk to my mother. So I went to my mother and I said, Mama, I said, I believe God is calling me to the mission field again. She said, then you need to go. Complete turnover. Complete change. 
And anyway, a short word and a short session was God provided a ticket. I had points already. God provided a ticket. I went before the board and I prayed and I said, God, what, is it, what do you want me to say to them? So and I just started. The questions they asked, I answered just straight up. And then uh, they said, uh, you're, you're accepted. So then I went back home, and before I left, the man said, you have to have a laptop. I didn't know anything about no laptop. I never used a laptop. I don't know nothing about it. And then he gives me all these specs and all this stuff I need. So I just wrote it down and put it in my pocket. I said, okay. <laughs> like, ain't nothing happening. <laughs> like, so Jenny, when I got home, uh, my mother said to me, she said, oh, she said, uh, how did it go? I said, well, mama, I said, they accepted me. And she said, what do you need? I said, I need a laptop. And she said, did you go looking for it? I said, no, I ain't going to look for no laptop. I ain't got no money. <laughs> I don't have no money. <laughs> Nobody. And she said, oh. Anyway, my birthday was coming up. So she said, let's go shopping. So I went with her, and she looked at a laptop, and it was on sale. And I looked at that laptop, and I said, God, I don't even know how to use that. And I said, God, give, I said, uh, I don't want them to pay that. I said, give me a cheaper price. So then the guy said, would you like less? Would you, would you like a cut on this? I said, yeah, possible. He went to talk to the manager, and the manager gave me 20% off more. And then my mother bought it. Anyway, long story short, I ended up driving out to Colorado, and that was my first mission agency that I worked with. And God uh, took me to Africa and other places in India. I didn't expect to do those things, but God did it. And he taught me how to use that laptop. Because I didn't take a course. I just looked up and tried to figure out what to do. <laughs> you know? So I learned. Yeah. So, so yeah. from college, God let me. Yeah. Um, if you, those of you who've been here remember, uh, as we've talked to Tenny before, God ended up taking her to the Philippines where she has spent 25 years. And in that, has used her and she's... Um, under the guise of her teaching degree, she has taught physics and sciences and to these uh, young people. And I wanted to talk about that for a minute. But um, it's an example of how God, wherever we are, because I want us, what I want us to get from this. And also, yes. Now, Tenny, yeah. Thank you. Ten, yeah. In the Philippines, the temperature is much warmer. <laughs> yeah. It's a, our summer, but this is cool yeah. for Tenny. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, we still have to be able to hear you, though. Oh, sorry. So pull that, just pull that over All a little right. bit. Yeah, just, That's just, okay. Yeah, okay. I just leave. Um, <laughs> but in, in, as you see, and as you're going to be listening, seeing the ways that God makes sweat, the space for you, even whether you com completely understand it in the moment, he makes space for you to walk in the things that he has made you. Now, the next question I have, because as we have talked and we've gotten to know you, uh, and even as we were talking earlier this week, prayer has greatly influenced and had an impact uh, on you, on the ministry that God has given you, and through that ministry in, in directly into the lives of the children that you've had an opportunity. Would you just take a minute and share with us the ways that uh, the impact of imp as you've prayed and talked to God, some of the examples of things has God has done, but just this relationship you have with him to, in talking with him in prayer. Yeah. I, I know I, I've shared this story before. I had a, I had a student who uh, could not get mad. It just wouldn't go in his head, you know. And I'm... Uh, and I was starting to get frustrated because I love math. I was, st I was starting to get frustrated with him. And uh, God said to me, it's not math. It's what's here that's stopping you. It's what's, sorry about that. It was, it was what, what's in his heart. So I prayed and I said, God, what, what is it? And I began to talk to him about, about the Lord and uh, uh, sharing and came out that he had a problem with his mother and that... Uh, the situation was not good. And uh, as he shared more, he began to cry. But then God opened his heart, and he asked Christ into his life. Uh, and now I think he's a nurse, married, two children. Um, relationship with his mother is good. 
Yeah. And keep, did I interrupt no, you? No, go ahead. Keeping in that theme, because you said that the message from God to you this year was step by step. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that as you go through this year, it's a matter of just walking with him and trusting him step by step. Could you share some examples, even in the connection with prayer and as God has been leading you, some examples of what that has looked like in your journey with, well, on the mission field this year? Well, the first thing was my going back to the Philippines. Uh, I never took the shot. I didn't take the shot. When you say the shot, what do you The mean? COVID, the COVID uh, shot, I never took it. Um, I had said to the Lord, I said, if I go back in, you have to open the doors for me to get in. And um, here, a friend of mine uh, works turbo medicine. She'd given me a letter as an excuse why I did not take the shot. So anyway, I prepared to go back, and I said, God, it's up to you whether I can get in or not. And so I went to uh, immigration. I was there. And they didn't ask me for the letter. They didn't ask me for the letter here to get in or nothing. But then when I got there, there was a lady who was starting to ask about the shot. And I said, I didn't take the shot. And then all of a sudden, it's just like she had a, like a mind break. She said, okay, you can go in. God just opened the door, mm -hmm. and I was praying. I said, Lord, you know I don't have a shot. And so God just opened the door, and I went in. I was able to go back in. The next step by step, the Lord said to me, was about, um, well, how I'm going to stay there, because I got the visa, and then... Uh, the, the lady I work with said I should get the senior retired visa. Well, number one, you have to take a physical. You see me with the cane, right? <laughs> so I had to take a physical. Number two, I had to, uh, I had to get um, documents done. I had to get uh, money. No money. I had to get money, and I just told the Lord, I said, you don't have to take me this step by step. I don't have anybody to do it. So the first step the Lord said to me was the, that I would uh, get the physical. <laughs> I knuckle. So I, I went to get a physical. You have to do the blood work, everything. It's like complete. So I, I went to get it, and then they said, oh, there might be a problem here, a problem here. But that's okay. That's all right. So I got, back, got past that point. Then I had to get an MBI. MBI proves that I'm not a criminal. And I had like one day to do it. And it usually takes about five weeks to get that done. I prayed and I said, Lord, you know, you have to do a miracle here. So I went to the MBA. I went online and I filled out this document thing. And I paid online. Then I just went to the place with somebody else, somebody else company being there. I went there and they let me in. And I was done in probably about 30 minutes. I had my MBI. <laughs> That's the second step by step he gave me. To make a long story short, um, my last tourist visa ended on February the 15th. And they had taken all of my documents. They took my, my passport, uh, my visa document. So I had nothing. And it's February already. And I was praying. I said, Lord, uh, I need a miracle because I'm going to get kicked out. I don't, I don't have any of my documents. And the lady said she could take care of it. But before I knew it, February the 4th came, I had gotten an email I didn't know about. And they were saying to me, come and get sworn in. I was like, sworn in? <laughs> get sworn in? But the date they had picked for me was a holiday. So it changed to February 7th. So February 7th, I'm there standing up there, an African American, born in Alabama, no money. Oh, the money thing. God provided the money. I don't know where it came from. I called my friend the station and I said, I said, do I have this type of money in my account? She said, yes, I can send it. I was like, God, you're wrong. This is a miracle. You know we don't have money. So I sent it. I got that done. And then I'm standing up in front of these people to do the, the swearing in. And I'm there with uh, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, all of us standing up there to swear in. And some of them don't understand English. So we're going, so we're just doing it, going through. But that was a major miracle that God did because I had no money. I had no money. I didn't have a lawyer. I didn't have any of those things, but God was my lawyer. Yes. 
He was my provider. He was my healer. Even with the cane, he gave it to me. So God is faithful. It's just step by step. This year has been one. And the other one was uh, when I got back, I started working with the, uh, it's okay to share mm -hmm. this one. Oh, yeah. I started working with the young professionals, 27-year-old and 30 years old. And I'm 65, okay? So I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what can I give them? You know, I'm 65. I'm not, you know, I'm not even in their range of what's happening. And then uh, and I just prayed, and the Lord said, they need to know that they can be used by God. They need to know that they are important. They need to know they have something of value to say. They need to know that there's somebody who cares about them. So when I began to pray and I asked, and the Lord said, you know, minister with them, listen to them, talk to them, spend time with them. So those are my beginning steps with them, was just to spend time with them, sitting down and eating, and just listening to their hearts, hearing what they were saying, hearing how they see the world, you know. They don't see it like we see it. They, they have expectations that maybe we don't have, you know. They're looking for hope. So during that time period, just listening and, and seeing them cry, seeing them go through, and then asking them, from, and then going to a Bible study with them, but also asking them, what do you see? What is God saying to you? Activating them and seeing God's word that it applies to their lives, you know. And as, as that began to happen, and praying that they would see that they could be used in God's kingdom. So we started out seeing who they are in God, seeing that God loves them, that they're not a waste. You know, there's something important to them. They have something important to give. And God said to me, they're the future. They're the ones who will, the children, they're the ones who will be the lawyer's doctor. They're the ones who will be the army. You're raising up an army for me. And so in that time period, I got to see them, of course, laugh, you know, joke, but also see them begin to say, ah, God's word is alive. You know? They begin to see, it's alive. It applies to me. I'm not just a waste, you know? And, and during that time, they begin to see that the talents they have and the dreams, some of them didn't believe that they could have a dream. But again, they begin to see that I have a dream. You know, there's something I want. And you know, when you see that happen, you begin to see their hearts break out. You know, you know? and they, they begin to they begin to volunteer and say, "I can do this. I can do that." So we started doing feeding programs. We started doing evangelism. We started doing uh, Bible studies. You know. I asked them to disciple the younger ones, you know, or look at that one and see, you know, and God reminded me, you know, it's not what we see in our face that he's looking at. He's looking at you as how he really sees you, as that, as that dynamic, as that dynamic of your dynamic doctor, lawyer, dynamic singer, dynamic worshiper. God sees that. You don't see me the way I look at me. And that's what they begin to see. You know, maybe today I'm not there, but step by step, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. And that's what I used to tell them, step by step. Each step you take. So as we took steps, they begin to volunteer. Later on, I begin to challenge them with the money deal. I said, can you give this? And then they said, yeah, I can give this. And later on, they said, all right, we can give more than that. And they said, let's have a retreat. Let's go. I was like, OK, you want to spend time talking about God on a retreat? All right, let's do it. <laughs> I said, 
I said, what part do you want to play? And somebody said, I'll be the logistics. Somebody said, I'll do this. You know, in the evangelism, somebody said, I'll do the Bible study. Somebody else said, well, I'll do the dance. You know, somebody else said, I'll do the feeding. You know, each one. They begin to stand up and they realize that they can be a part. And I remember uh, before I left, two of them said to me, they said, we were praying that we could have a ministry. We were praying that somebody would come and see us. You know? So I would encourage you, if you are like me, 65, your time is not up. Amen. Your time is not up. This fact is just beginning for you. It's just beginning. Don't give up. If you're in your 30s and 40s, you have children, you're breeding the new generation of life. I remember going back to my student, there's one I was having a hard time with. He just seemed to do the wrong thing every time, you know? <laughs> every time. I'd look at him and go, what? But then I began to pray, and God said, there's something else. And then he began to talk to me. And he said his mother's overseas all the time, and he was raised by his grandma. And then he was ta taken from his grandma, and he's put in our school, and he's living with the cousin who always tells him he's nothing. So he's being beat up every day. And so God said to me, he needs to be loved on. He needs to be encouraged. So I would tell him, you know, you have a purpose. You got a purpose. Yeah. I would tell him, you memorize the scripture. He's like, I can't even memorize. He said, you're going to memorize today, but you're not going home. <laughs> Sit in, <here>, memorize. <laughs> you're not going home. Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. Well, he made it. He memorized. And he graduated. He graduated this year. He brought his grandma to me so I could see her. You know? And he said, he said, he, you know, he said, he's going to make it. He's going to finish it. I believe that. Amen. I believe that. Amen. Mm -hmm. That is such a blessing. Uh, Tenny, uh, and in, just what, as we are looking, you know, here uh, in our mission field, and maybe God may, even as a result of this conversation today, God may stir uh, in one of your hearts, in our hearts, to, uh, to take a step toward mission field. Our, um, our young folks are having a wonderful time over in the park today, and I believe God is doing uh, something in their lives over there. But you never know how these conversations uh, will impact their lives, potentially. But really, this is our mission field, where we live. And so what are some things you would share with us as we uh, begin to, to wrap up our time? What would be some things that you would share with us in our walk with God, in our listening to God, in our availability that would, even as God has empowered you to have a, an impact in the Philippines, uh, what are some things that you would share with us that would encourage us to have an impact in the places where we live? Uh, the first thing I would, I would tell you to do is pray. I'll be honest with you. First thing I tell you to do is pray. Before you step out, pray. If you see somebody hurting, Pray and ask God wisdom. How can I minister to that person? That's what I do, to be honest with you. I ask God, how can I minister to that person? And once you, you hear from the Lord, maybe he might tell you just to, to uh, knock on the door, and just sit down and listen. They might complain the whole time. I've had that happen. But as they're complaining, you can begin to pray for them. You don't have to, you don't have to say it out loud. Just, just pray for them that God will work and heal some of that deep hurt that they have. They have. So prayer and then step out as God leads you. Uh, if you know that you have a gift in Bible study, get a Bible study together. That's a, that's a beginning. There's such a thing as evangelistic Bible studies. And that can be done just by inviting people over for a meal, sitting down and just talking to them. And as you're talking to them, um, God might open the door to share just a little bit. And 
just step by step. I just had an, an example happen to somebody. They, uh, they were um, talking to somebody, and somebody came up and said to them, can we not watch The Chosen? They're not saved. They're not saved. Can we not watch The Chosen? So different ways God can use you. One is just by going over. If you're an elevate person, they need help, you know, cutting the grass or something, just volunteer and do it. Uh, if it's a young person that's struggling in the story, the studies, then you know you can help them, do it. Just spend time. Or if it's a young person you know whose family never there for them, invite them over, or just go over and, and sit and spend time with them. Um, sharing the word, or uh, even just sharing, um, sharing food, or even just sharing your time. That's what I would do, starting out. Thank you. Um, we're going to pray for you in a moment, but I want to let everybody know, that too, is because we've been um, supporting uh, Tenny for these 28 years, 25 years, I believe. Uh, and um, that has been a blessing, and we're going to talk about that in, in a moment. But also, after being in the, this one area of the Philippines this many years, uh, God is changing your assignment a little bit. Oh, yeah. You're going to tell, and so you're going, to, you're going to be leaving the area where you've been in the orphanage and the education area where you've been helping in the or orphanage. And just tell people uh, just a little bit about where God is sending you next. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll be leaving uh, Kabuya Laguna, which is north here, and I'll be going down further into Visayas, Ilocos area. I'll be, um, actually, I don't know all, know all the stuff I'll be doing yet, to be honest with you. I'll be doing, uh, I'll never stop teaching. I just got, I had uh, a student email me to ask for help with fractions. I had a student told me, even though I'm leaving, she will email me and ask me for chemistry and physics help and math help. So I, I will never stop teaching this in my heart, to be honest with you, all styles of teaching. I'll be going into an area where there is uh, Ida. Ida is a tribal group that's up the mountain. The children will be ministering to them. I'll be doing, again, what I did before, faith gardening, food always in the home. I'll be also working with a possibility college students, uh, solidifying them in their faith, and also encouraging them to minister in the college that they're in. Um, I'll also be doing, uh, of course, our forever prayer. Um, I'll also be doing other things that I don't even know yet. I'm just trusting God. It's step by step. I'm going to a new place. Uh, why am I going to a new place? Because God said it's time to go on. It's time to move. You know, it's hard to move, but I know that I need to be where God has called me to be. I don't want to be in a place. I don't want to be comfortable, let's say. It's not about comfort. It's not about a place that you, your provision is taken care of because God is our provider. So I'm not leaving my provision, my provider. <laughs> He's going to be there. You know? <laughs> you know, so I don't have that fear. So, um, if you ask me what song goes for my youth this year is My God Can. That's the song that God made me remember. My God can. He's able to do it when I cannot do it. I'm just looking at him and trusting him. And that's, uh, if that's the word I can leave you with, is that. If you're uncertain, ask God. That's what I've been doing, asking him. And if he doesn't open the door, then I know, hey, I don't want to go through it because <laughs> it's not there. But ask God. That's what I've been doing. So Thank you, Tenny. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Tenny is going to be leaving, I think, going back. We're headed back. The mm -hmm. journey back is next weekend? The 11th. The 11th. 11, the 11, yeah. the 11. Yes, and uh, we, we want to really, like I said, we... We've been having the honor of supporting Tenny for uh, many years now. 
Uh, but we want to just keep some, some other special things in mind. And uh, what I'd like to do be some, because there's some needs that have arisen. Um, she's, her prescription with her glasses is well out of date. As a matter of fact, the, these are, uh, the other glasses got broken accidentally. And so these are some glasses before the last prescription. <laughs> and so we, we want to, to do some things with that and uh, some other things that uh, uh, will help with some needs that she has at this time beyond what our support is. And so what I'd like to do, and we're going to set a basket up front here, and the way we're going to dismiss today, I'm going to take a moment and, 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 and pray as we normally do, but the way we are going to dismiss today, instead of just leaving um, we're going we're gonna to come through here and then just place your offering in the basket. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of even rethinking myself as I'm talking this out here, I'm making a plan on the, uh, as I'm talking, because I, I want to also, also offer an opportunity. We're going to pray for Tenny, but perhaps in hearing her testimony, uh, as you were here this morning, uh, you feel God calling you to things. He may, again, be calling you to the mission field, uh, but he may be calling you to some other things. And you just want to know how to launch out further into the things that God is calling you. Maybe as you're hearing her story or through the service, there are needs in your hearts that you want prayer for. And so we want to take time, as we normally do, to pray. So we're going to have the elders come forward um, and so, again, I'm going to figure out what we need to do with the basket here instead. But also, most importantly, whether you're watching virtually, and if you're watching virtually, too, and you're giving in terms of just to bless Tenny today, remember, you can go online and give to missions. If you're here today and what you have in your pocket or you, 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 want, to, you want to give more than that or you just want to give it online, Again, remember, you can go to our website here in the, while you're here in the building or if you're watching virtually. You can go to our website and you can go to missions. Just give it to missions and we'll make sure it gets to, to Tenny. Okay? Um, but this is also very important, extremely important. If you're watching virtually or if you're here in the house today, and your relationship with Jesus is not what it should be. If you do not know him as your Lord and Savior, or maybe he, you have confessed him as your Lord and Savior, but you know you have not been surrendering your life to him the way you should. We're going to bow our heads together. And I'm going to pray. And when the elders are standing up front, if you need prayer concerning your relationship with God, and like I said, also, if you just need prayer um, just, again, concerning your calling or any of those things. The elders are available here to pray while our heads are bowed. And, um, again, ushers, um, would you set that offering basket? I mean, we know the pathway out is out there by near the door. Just would you take it and thank you for being flexible with me. But, um, In this moment, first of all, Lord, we're, we're coming together and it's such a blessing and honor to be a part of the ministry that you've given to our sister Tenny. We thank you that you, she's an example, even as we look at what it means to live a life ignited for you. One that is passionate to know you, to live for you, and to serve you. We thank you that we are inspired and encouraged by her life. And Lord, right now in this moment that we have to pray, we lift her up before you. She has sh shared with us how continually as she has poured out, you have poured back into her. And now we ask you to continue to do that. Lord, replenish her spirit continually. Replenish her soul, her mind, her emotions, her will continually. 
but also replenish her body. She has given her body as a sacrifice for your purpose. Lord, we lift up her knees and, her, and, and, and every physical need she has. And we thank you, Lord, for the glorious, her feet, her, the glorious power of your spirit, even as she's going to a new place. And as she mentioned, she's going to be in the mountains. And so she's probably going to have to be walking up some hills and cli do, you know, climbing some steep places, oh God. Lord, I thank you for your supernatural strength. I thank you, Lord, for your abundant supply. Lord, you're, you, you are the supplier. You are the healer, not just of the financial things, but the things she needs in her physical being. And in every way that she pours out, Lord, we ask that you will pour back into her. Press down, shaken together, running over, Lord. We lift up those who you're sending it to. And Lord, from this place, because there's no distance, no time or space where your spirit is not. And even right now, we thank you for preparing hearts. We thank you for preparing souls. We thank you, Lord, for breakthroughs. Lord, where the, the forces of hell have men and women, have, particularly have young people and, 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 and students and children bound up. Right now, we thank you that the spirits of hell that are binding up their lives will be broken off of them. That their hearts will be open to be ready to receive your love through the teaching of the classes. That in math classes and in physics classes, you're going to bring people to yourself. You're going to transform like you have been doing families. We pray for the place that she's leaving. For those who you're bringing to take her place. That the, that the legacy of your gospel will continue. That, Lord, you're not a God that goes backwards, but that it will be even greater. Now, Lord, I pray for your people, and I bless them. I bless each person. I thank you, Lord, for the ministry of your spirit in every life. Right now, if you're here and your relationship with the Lord is not what it should be, I ask that you would just come and let the elders pray. If, you need, if you're praying just about your, your calling or some of the things that Tenny shared, just come and they will pray for you. Um, if you look over to your right, okay, Femi and Darshell over to your right, they're there. If, you have, if you're visiting you have questions about our church, you can go over there and they'd be happy to answer those questions for you. And then lastly, online, if you've given yourself to the Lord today, go online and scroll across where it says accepting Jesus and just fill in the information. And if you, as you fill in the information, uh, we just want to help you and are excited to help you with your walk with the Lord. Now, can we stand on our feet together? God bless you today. Where is that basket back there? I want you as have an usher stand and hold it, please. Don't just sit it down. Have somebody hold it very visibly. Yes. Yeah, come, come up from the door. Come out this way a little bit. Yes, right there, because everybody's got to pass that way anyway. And so, again, if you can consider what the Lord would have you give to get, again, we can bless Tenny today directly, or if you're going to do it online, you can go and do that, okay? Give it to missions. God bless you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he stir his vision and his purpose, starting with his relationship with you, greatly in your heart. In Jesus' name, be blessed today. Amen. You may, you're dismissed at this time.